Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about the title of the bulletin for this morning, Salt Upon a Stone, Upon a Rock. I want to begin by talking about a pinch of salt. That could be taken in different ways, such as a grain of salt. If you hear something, oh, take it with a grain of salt. We've all said that. We know exactly what it means when we hear it. But it can also mean something just the opposite for the better, especially such terms as um, a um, pinch of salt, uh, a smidgen of salt, or a dash of salt. Now, according to those who are uh, uh, in the realm of uh, diet rules and well-being, uh, it's been determined that a dash of salt is one-eighth of a teaspoon of salt. A pinch of salt is one sixteenth of a teaspoon. And a smidgen is one thirty second of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so keep that one in mind because that fits in with how we're going to do ministry because it talks specifically about the importance of salt in the well being of us and how life functions in teaching what it means to be the salt of the earth. Salt is good, is how he concludes his message to the disciples. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? That's the question we need to always ask, how good is the salt I cast upon others? Solid enough, salty enough, and good enough for a change in their life. Have salt in yourselves, and then it says this, and be at peace with one another. Hang on to that. We all know the importance of what we have when we dash a little salt on our meal, when we feel we need a little bit more flavoring. But the important thing to remember is how far this can go in terms of making things better in life altogether. You can use salt to bind the meat that you roast, to get all the enzymes together, to hold it together, to bring out flavor. You have salt that's used in tannery. Your shoes, your belts, purse straps, all made with salt in a process of as many as 30 different steps for a tanner once he gets the raw piece of skin off a cat. You also have salt that is used for uh, binding, you have it for tanning, you have it for color enhancement, the bright colors that you are wearing, and others is enhanced with salt. Salt is used, as you know, in preservation. Think about all the foods that we eat off the shelf or even at home if we want to make a, a dish last a little bit longer than normal, you put salt with it. The salt has played an important part in America's history, and I'm not talking just about the United States, but all of North America, Central America, and South America, the Western Hemisphere, because numerous times wars and conflicts with the people in those regions for the longest time have been a result over fighting for salt control, believe it or not. The Cape Cod militiamen fought the English regulars over salt. That wasn't something I learned in the history book. It's something I learned later on from a historian personally. The Union Army fought against the Confederate Army for salt as well as for other issues. How interesting. Salt has for thousands of years helped in the preservation as well as making life better. It doesn't take a lot, just a pinch will do. 
During the journeys of Jesus and his disciples, they witnessed a man they did not know doing some miracle in the name of Jesus. I would have loved to know what his name and background was. But then again, maybe not, because it could be me. It could be you. Somebody that we've not known or are known by. I remember well when I did a favor for someone years ago. Didn't know the person, a young man. And upon receiving some help, he looked at me and he said, that was mighty Christian of you. And I didn't think much about it at first, but it did stump me a little bit. And then looking back, I thought to myself, I still remember that face. I still remember what he said to me years and years ago. Never knew the guy, but he threw some salt at me for the better because I did not realize how important generosity, kindness, respect goes with somebody else when you throw a little salt at them for the better. That's the value of healthy, well-being salt that Jesus is talking about. I remember very well when I was living in London and walking up Oxford Street, and i just actually come out of Selfridge's, that wonderful department store. And when you go into that store, there are several doors, big glass, brass surroundings and handles. And as I come out, there were four American women been shopping in London. And their arms and bags and hands are like this. Can you imagine packages underneath of this all together? And they come to the doors. And for some reason, I said, hey, let me get the door open for you. And then let them in. And then there was another set of doors inside before you got into the main store. Let me help again. Think about it. It just made sense. But they all said just about in unison, what a gentleman. I'm not saying that for kudos for any reason, but I remember that. Throw a little salt, you might say, to make life better for somebody on that moment or any kind of moment we have an opportunity for. And if we don't have that opportunity, look for the opportunities like this unknown man who did a miraculous act for somebody in the name of Jesus. And stand by. You have witnessed for Jesus in ways you never thought witnessing would include. Gentle little things, sweet little things, life-changing things to make a day better for somebody. Remember, whoever is not against you is for you. Very important. The ministry of Jesus has a constant, clear pattern of outreach and love for any and all people. Let's keep that one in mind in particular. This bit about, I like so-and-so, uh, I don't know. No, none of that. When Jesus looks at us, he doesn't look and say, I like this one, I like that one, I like this one. Well, the others? No, everyone is included. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. You have no idea, I have no idea, when gestures of kindness is done for me by a stranger, I don't know their background, but it doesn't make a hill of beans difference. They are doing something lovely in the name of Jesus for me. I have to remember that. Even maybe some criticism as well. Because criticisms, criticism can take us a long ways in correcting and setting our bearing correctly again in life like a compass reading. Did you pick up on what Jesus said about the fall of the little ones? <clears throat> it talks about not only the neck, but the hand, the foot, and the eye. The last three specifically. Don't conclude that he was talking just about little children, but also about powerless ones. Women, the elderly, the infirmed, the disabled, people of lesser strength you might say. 
That's also included in the same boat, you might say, as the little ones we consider children, the helpless. In light of such judgment that we have read in today's gospel about being tossed into the fire and tossed for this or that, as if we had a millstone around our neck and into the water to drown, in light of that, we are extended his promise by being the salt of the world. I like that. Instead of being totally condemned, as somebody would condemn others first and foremost, there is an escape clause, and that is to recognize a good deed, a pinch of salt here, a dash of salt there, a smidgen here, can go a long ways in turning somebody's life around for the better, thanks to your efforts. The warning is that don't lose the sense of purpose to worship God and serve one another. <clears throat> be on the lookout for what may be a great opportunity to witness where you can throw a pinch of salt, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less to somebody that will make life better, like a meal that tastes better, like colors we wear that will be brighter. There is hope in verse 50. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can we season it? That's the challenge that he leaves to us. Stay well, stay active, and consider that every day you will have an impact on somebody, be it family, neighbor, friend, by how you treat them with that specialness that you have, that only you have. There's another underlying lesson for each one of us in today's gospel, and that is that we will not get far with Jesus in the finger-pointing that we saw in the disciples. Now, I get a little perturbed at times of the disciples of Jesus. This is one of the cases. In front of Jesus of all times, finger-pointing. This person did something in your name, and he's not part of us. Rather than finding fault with others of faith in Jesus, let's look to our own behavior. Who will cast the first stone is our challenge. And that should pretty well sober us up instantly and stand back. The judgment that needs to be made is not of others, but of ourselves. How many times have we said, as we walked away from a situation, I wish I had kept my mouth shut. I sure wish I had never said that. I sure hate eating crow. The list goes on, doesn't it? Are we a pinch of salt to people, or are we a stumbling block? Ponder on that. There are some catchwords in today's gospel. Name, fire, salt. In verse 42 to 47, Jesus uses the Greek word skandalon, which is an obstacle for people to trip over. Think about that. How many times have we stumbled? And when we collect ourselves, we look back, what did my feet just catch? Didn't notice it. We can be a stumbling block in other people by not tipping them off, you might say, beforehand. There are many instances under the heading of carelessness in our individual ministry. If we stop and think of the situation we're in, we look around, we can see in the eyes of somebody if they're unhappy or disturbed, prepondering something or another, and our presence, just our presence next to them, can be the support they're needing in a time of difficulty. In London, the underground is something that we would call the subway here in America, New York subways, or wherever subways are, Washington, D.C., but in London, as I used to travel extensively on the underground, there were signs 
One that stood out more than the place where the underground was at was Mind the Gap. Because on the floor of each train, where it meets the platform you're standing on, which was made out of concrete, there was a gap of about three or more inches. And everybody would mind the gap. As you step in, you don't want to get your foot in there. You're not going to get it in time before the train starts moving again. And it does severe damage. Carelessness is a term we often apply to ourselves, understandably. How many times have we been careless with something or another in our driving, something in the house, some misjudgment of something that got us in injured? It is there where in there can be irreparable damage thanks to our own neglect. Mind the gap with a pinch of salt is maybe the best remedy of healing and for witnessing for Jesus. People for thousands of years have used salt to preserve, to flavor, to control color, to bind leather, to ferment and make texture all the better, not only in clothing, but also in food. I thought in the last week, Jesus could not have picked a better mineral as an example for a teaching tool. Because everybody knows in life, throughout history, the importance of salt. We are salt within our bodies. But he wanted to take it more as just not a biological factor, but a sociological, a spiritual, and a lot more for our learning and for our application of being the difference in other people's life by simple little gestures. A pinch of salt, a dash of salt, a smidgen of salt, and life is made better. What great witnessing he made for them then when he said this, and for us always. Amen.